Hi everyone. Um, today we are going to talk about the chain rule. Chain rule is used to differentiate some functions. For example, we are trying to differentiate a composite function. So what is a composite function? A composite function is y equals to f of gx. So which means you put one function in another function and I'm trying to differentiate that. So what we all learned before is differentiate polynomials. So we have x to the power of something plus n x to the power of n minus 1. Um, that's the only thing we can differentiate. So today we are talking about the chain rule to make sure you can expand, like you can differentiate something without expanding. Uh, let's just have a look at this example here. We have 3x to the power of 2 plus 1 then to the power of 3. Then this is a composite function. We can say my gx equals to 3x to the power of 2 plus 1. And then my fx equals to x to the power of 3. So it will be the same as I put gx into the function of fx, and that will give me the function y here. So before what we learn, if we want to differentiate this to find dy dx, what we will have is expand everything, use the formula uh, a plus b cubed to expand everything and then differentiate. But like we can do this by an easier way of doing this. So let's have a look at the chain rule. So what is the chain rule? The chain rule is dy dx equals to dy du times du dx. So we have a middle term, which is u. Well, if you can think about that's two fraction times together, if we can cancel here, that still gives you dy dx. So that's the purpose of this question. Okay, that's the uh, purpose of using this rule. So we introduce a new variable here and then trying to use that um, variable to find out the differentiation. So just have a look in how what we do here. So what we do here is we make u instead of 3x squared plus 1. So what we have is now y equals to u to the power of 3. We have a relation in between y and u now. Okay, we have a relation in between y and u now. And also we have a relation in between u and x now. Okay, so there are two relationships. So what we want to do is connect y and x together. What we're trying to find is dy dx. Okay, so if we want to find the derivative of this function, what we're trying to find is dy dx. Then we introduce a new variable u. We can find dy du times du dx. Those two things must be equivalent because as I explained, if you treat that as a fraction, then this du and this du can be cancelled. And that still gives you dy dx. Therefore, let's have a look. What is dy du? dy du must be found by using the relationship between y and u. So therefore, y equals to u to the power of 3. Then dy du equals to 3u to the power of 2. Okay, dy du is 3u to the power of 2. And now what is du dx? Okay. We need to use the relation between u and x. Okay, by using this function here, we have the relationship between u and x. Therefore, du dx is 6x. Okay, we times that together. So dy dx equals to that. Then we don't want u in the function because u is something we just create. So we don't want u, we want to stop u back. Okay, I want to sub u back. So therefore, we have 3 brackets, 3x squared plus 1 to the power of 2, then times 6x. And then we have 18x times 3x squared plus 1, then to the power of 2. Okay, that is the um, chain rule. Okay, that is the chain rule. It is a very important rule. Okay, it is a very important thing. And... Well, you don't want to substitute u every time. You don't want to introduce, well, let u equals to 3x to the power of 2, uh, 2 plus 1. So that can be um, very complex if you do that every single time. So this is the basic about the chain rule. But we can remember some formula for chain rule directly. There are two formula you must remember. Okay, There are two formula you must remember. The first formula is if y equals to f 
of gx. That's the composite function. So that's basically what we have here. Okay, that's the composite function. So what that equal equivalent to? So dy dx must be the same as you derive the inner function, and then you derive the outer function, which is f dash, and then you still put gx in. Okay, so you derive the inner function times you derive the outer function and you still have gx inside that. So let's have a look at this one. So this one is f you know in the way of f of gx. So if you derive the inner function, that gives you 6x. Okay, and then if you derive the outer function, so what's f dash x? So fx is x to the power of 3. If you, divide, you derive the outer function, that should give you 3x to the power of 2. And then don't forget, you need to sub gx into the outer function. Okay, sub gx into that. So I will sub 3 bracket 3x squared plus 1, then to the power of 2. So that will still give me an 18x, and then 3x squared plus 1 to the power of 2. Okay, if you can remember the formula, that will be quicker to do by using like the u method, like substitute u equals to 3x squared plus 1. Okay, so this formula is extremely important. You must remember that. So it will be the same as you derive the inner function first times you derive the outer function. And then you still put the inner function into the derivative of the outer function. That's the one thing. And another thing is, if fx equals to gx to the power of m, or m, anything to the power of m, therefore f dash x will be, you bring the n down, and you derive the inner function, and then you reduce the power by 1 for the whole function here. So it is actually one of the special case from the previous question but in a lot of case we will only deal with gx to the power of n case well there will be a lot of questions telling about gx to the power of n so for example that one is still using that function that question here so if you think about using the second formula here so dy dx will equals to so gx is the inner function here and then to the power of three that's the n so you bring the n down you derive the inner function what you get is a 6x and then you times the outer function reduce the power by one so reduce the power by one that gives you this so you can see that's still an 18x times 3x squared plus one to the power of two okay so i have shown you like all this different method but all of this is called a chain rule method so chain rule is dealing with uh composite functions okay to find the deriv uh, derivatives of the composite function Okay, let's have a look at the example below here. So I want to differentiate y equals to 4x to the power of 3 minus 5x then to the power of negative 2. Then we can see the inner function is this one and then to the power of n, which is negative 2. So we will have dy dx. That equals to, we can use this, fun this formula here. So we will put n in the front first. That gives me a negative 2 and times I would derive the inside which is a 12x squared minus 5 and then the third thing we'll do is reduce the power by 1 now times 4x to the power of 3 minus 5x and then to the power of negative 3 so we can write that in the way of minus 24x squared plus 10 over 4x to the power of 3 minus 5x then to the power of 3. Okay, so that's the simplified version of it. Well, it's better than you expand it. Well, you can't really expand in this case because we don't know what this power of negative 2 looks like. But this is the best way to solve for it. Okay, we still use the chain rule. Okay, those two. They are both chain rules. Okay, the bottom one is a special case of the top. Okay, the top question here. So what you need to do is bring the power down, derive inside, 
and reduce that power by one and then just uh, make any simplifications if necessary okay and let's have a look at the next one find the gradient of the curve with equation that at the point one comma four okay i want to find the gradient of the curve gradient of the curve is refers to dy dx so i want to find dy dx now like i have something under the denominator which is not good so what i want to do is I'll make that into the power form so remember now everything in the power form will easy to deal with so dy dx will be the same as well the 16 is just a constant just still leave the constant there because it's a constant times fx the derivative will still be the constant times the f dash x so if we bring the power down so that times by negative one and then you will times that by derive the inner function here so that gives me a 6x and then I will reduce the power by one as well so that gives me negative two so dy dx equals to negative 96x over 3x plus 3 plus 1 and then to the power of 2 okay that's the derivatives for that function and I want to know when x equals to 1 what dy dx equals to so dy dx equals to negative 96 over if that's 1 that's 4 to the power of 2 and that will give me a negative 6 that will give me a negative 6 okay it's negative 96 divided by 16 that will be a negative 6 okay that's how we use chain rules okay I have to show you two ways um, three different ways basically like make u and then using f g x and use the power of n formula so 90% of the question will be deal with that formula okay something to the power of especially in year 11 because we only learn polynomials so let's have a look at example 3 here okay for example 3 the table gives the information about the function fx f dash x gx and g dash x okay i have given that hx equals to f g okay it's a composite function so it's composite you don't know what is g you don't know what is x but you know that hx is you put g into the f so now what you're looking for is h2 and what you're looking for is h2 so let's have a look at what is h2 so h2 is f bracket g2 all right let's have a look what is g2 here so function g is here and then 2 is here Okay, so g2 okay, g and 2 gives you 1 so the inside will just become a 1 and the next thing you look at is what is f1 okay so 1 is here f is here so f1 is just a negative 2 so h2 is negative 2 by looking at this table by looking at this table so you don't know the function but i know some special values for example 0 1 2 for all of these four functions okay now the next thing i'm looking at is h dash one before i can evaluate it i need to know what is h dash x okay if hx is that h dash x must be the derivative so remember that's the second formula we talk about for chain rule so we will derive the outer inner function and times derive the outer function but you still put keep the inside as gx so that's the derivative of this function so now if i have h dash one that will be the same as g dash one times f dash g one so what is g dash one okay g dash x and one that gives you negative two times f dash you will evaluate inside what is g one okay g one is a zero so you evaluate g 
f dash zero. So negative two times f dash zero is negative three. Therefore, that gives you a six. Okay, that gives you a six. So h dash one equals to six. Okay, h dash one equals to six. So that's how we do this type of question. So this formula is very important to solve this function because it's no longer x to the power of n form. So you must use this composite function formula to find the derivative. Okay, so I've done with the chain rule today. So I want you to use the rest of the time to complete the next page. I want you to use the rest of time to you use chain rule to complete next page. Well, this function cannot really done by using chain rule. So you separate them and then derive them separately. I can just give you this much hint and I'll upload the solutions later. So I want you to uh, find solve um, this page before next lesson.